Hey guys, welcome to another episode of DeLorean Tech, and today I'm going to take you through the process of replacing the bulkhead ground. So, the bulkhead ground is just to the right of the ignition coil, and it's really hard to see from here, but you can kind of see what I did. So, I installed a new ground wire that connects from the original bulkhead ground location all the way down to the transmission casing which is sort of like a John Hervey style ground setup so if you saw my first episode of get grounded you'll see that I relocated the connection point for the battery ground from the trailing arm bushing bolt down to the transmission in this case what I've done is um, there is a, a ground wire that is right here, and I preserve the original ground wire like I always do. So it's this one right here. So that was originally there. It's still there. It's just I have another ground with zero gauge wire going down the transmission. So this actually comes along here and is connected to the frame just in front of and below the coolant reservoir bottle. There's the bolt right there. And this ground wire goes from there all the way to, so you can see it right there, all the way to the bulkhead. Poor choice gauge wire to use. It looks like it might be eight gauge wire. I went ahead and went with zero gauge, just like I did with all the other um, main battery alternator and um, starter cables. I've upgraded everything to zero gauge welding cable, which is 100% copper. So I saw this as an opportunity. It's a pretty easy installation. You just have to remove the ignition coil and in order to gain access, probably remove or unplug the bulkhead wires as well. So. We'll go under the car and I'll show you exactly um, what this looks like. So, if you remember my first video on Get Grounded, part one, you'll remember the work I did grounding the battery and the cooling fans to the transmission casing. So, I basically did the same thing here with the bulkhead ground. So, if you remember the John Hervey style um, grounding that I did. So you can see where we have the Hervey ground connection, which is the battery cable right here, which is a zero gauge wire. And then the original ground cable that went to the battery, which I've reconnected here. And that went to the trailing arm bolt. So I've, I've preserved that connection. And then for the bulkhead ground, I went ahead and grounded that right here. So you can see the bulkhead ground connection. And that goes up to the engine compartment. That's also a zero gauge cable. And ever since I've, I've completed all of these different grounding, and also I've got a, another video on how to upgrade the battery and alternator cables, uh, ever since I've done that, I have seen a dramatic increase in voltage, especially when I'm running the AC system. There's hardly any drop at all. And I think it just kind of goes to show that uh, the size of the ground and what you choose the ground to makes a big difference. So this video will explain exactly how to make this connection. It's very simple. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the relay compartment. And in order to access the ground and replace that ground wire, you're actually gonna have to um, disconnect this. You've gotta take out the, the rear panel over here and then go ahead and um, remove the, this is a 10 millimeter nut right there. So you can just take socket, and that'll take care of that. And you can tell it's kind of moving, so you're gonna have to hold it. 
So once you get it loose, you can just remove the little nut and there's a washer behind there as well. Now this ground connects to the grounds within the relay compartment. So this is kind of like your main ground for the entire car. Kind of leaves a lot to be desired. That's why I'm gonna to try to see if I can fortify it versus try to replace the ground wire. I feel like the setup that they have in the car is just not sufficient. So that stud right there, that's connected through the bulkhead on the other side. So back here in the bulkhead area, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bolt that's there. You're gonna to have to hold the nut or try to get the nut off from the other side before this will come out. So um, again, this is a 10 millimeter. So using a socket on the other end, you can hold it or you can have somebody else hold it for you and then you can just easily remove this nut by hand. There you go. And there's also a washer there as well. So we'll go around the other side here. We'll just get the bolt. And there it is. So we'll go ahead and clean that up. So if you find that this opening right here is kind of dirty or maybe it's not aligned properly, you can actually grind this open a little bit more with a grinding bit on a, on a hand drill. And that'll also help uh, smooth out or at least clean up the surface of the metal that's in there. Make sure you cover up the area and, and try to make sure that there's no wiring that's like right in here. These power wires, right, you should probably move those back if you can so that they're not in the area. The idea is that you want to make sure that that's nice and, and clean. You can also take a sanding tool, like a Dremel with a little sanding attachment, and then you can sand down and clean up the terminals as well. You want to follow up by doing the same thing here in the engine bay. So you want to take your uh, sanding tool and sand down the ground as well. I'm going to continue to use the stock ground. It's always good to. Uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to run a, an additional ground from that point right there down to the transmission. So for the ground right here, what we're going to do is we're going to maintain the original ground. But we're going to add an additional ground and ground that to the location where we grounded the battery. So that's at the transmission casing so we'll add a, a lug and another connection we have to angle it right here so we don't come in contact with the positive so we'll figure that out okay so what I'm doing now is I'm feeding the ground cable down to underneath the vehicle and I'm going to measure out exactly how much I need to make that connection so here we are at the transmission and what we're going to do is we're going to choose a suitable ground connection for this. As you can see I already have the John Hervey ground set up. So I think I'm going to choose the bolt right here that's closest and that is just a frame mount bolt. So we'll go ahead and choose that. So this is just the 13 millimeter that we're going to use to loosen and remove the, uh, the bolt that's in place there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and make our cable we're using zero gauge cable. We're gonna go ahead and do a proper crimp, just like we did in the other video. I also uh, put a little bit of dielectric grease on the inside of the lug so that it actually holds it in place. So a little trick I picked up. There's no problem putting dielectric grease inside the connection. Once you crimp it, it displaces the grease and the grease will either come out or it will fill up the cavities on the inside. Our crimpers set on the zero gauge size here for the crimp and we're gonna go ahead and make the crimp. Okay so here we are we've made our connection to the transmission 
We left it slightly loose so that we can kind of play with it when we route the other end up through the engine bay. Um, we'll tighten that down, the factory torque specifications at the very end of the install. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna route the other end back up through the engine bay. So here we are back in the engine bay and it's about maximum right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from this point to about right there. So we have our lug coming around here. So give it a little bit of extra because you could always pull it through and tie it with a zip tie. You don't want to want this to be too short to where you're pulling on it. There's also a fuel line down there. So you want to make sure you're clear of that. So you can actually, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a, a the return fuel line runs right through here. So you don't want to put any pressure on that. That's actually the hard line right there, but you still don't want to put any unnecessary pressure. So you want to keep the, uh, the ground wire this way towards the center of the engine bay. So we cut our wire and now we're gonna run this back down through so we can crimp it. Again, be uh, careful of that fuel line that's there. Let it out of the way there. So here's the entire length of the ground cable. It's very short. It's only maybe two, two and a half feet total. So we're gonna go ahead and put another lug on this side. Okay, so here's our completed battery cable that we we're going to use to John Hervey the engine bay ground that runs to the bulkhead. So we are going to connect this from the transmission to the bulkhead ground. So we're going to run the cable back down the ground area here in the engine compartment, just like we did before. Back down in there. Again, make sure you don't disturb that fuel line that's there. And what we'll do is we'll set it up temporarily here so we don't lose the cable. So the next thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna run and run the the bolt through these two ground connectors like that. So this bolt right here has to run through the two grounds and you'll connect the nut and the washers together. So I always look at the parts manual to determine how these are all supposed to go together correctly. So as you can see right here, the schematic, we've got the bolt, washer, ring connector, then we've got a lock washer, then we've got a nut, then the opening, then you have another flat washer, then another nut on the other side. So that would be in the cabin of the vehicle. These seven and nine would be inside the cabin, so where the relay compartment is. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I've got my washer on there. I'm using a brand new one. We'll go ahead and this will be on top, and then this will be on the bottom. It just kind of works out a little better that way. It's kind of arbitrary though. You could do it this way if you wanted to. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I wanted to have this one on the back side. So I'm going to run the bolt through there. So it looks like the lock washer is next. followed by the nut. So we'll thread that on. We'll also be applying some dielectric grease to the to the connections to seal them off better. So what we'll do is we'll see if we can get that in there. So here is the uh, connection that's holding pretty good. I don't have the cable fed down right now because it was starting to fall through. I just kept it up here 
in the engine compartment. It doesn't really matter. You can get this tight now and then connect that right there. Notice how I'm protecting the positive. We've got a barrier there. There's also a factory installed sort of, um, looks like an insulator, uh, some sort of material that they, they just kind of put here. I think it's the same material that they're using as the sound deadening in the cabin, that dynamat type stuff. So I kept that there just to act as a, um, a barrier. I think it's important to keep it there. Go ahead and keep it there. I actually took it off, but then I reapplied some RTV sealant, some adhesive on the back to make sure it sticks better. There's gonna be no chance of those two connections ever touching each other, so we're good to go there. And what's really cool is that you'll have the battery cable, it'll be situated this way, the ground cable, and it fits really snug right behind the uh, ignition coil. So it's a perfect fit for it. Works great. Okay, so here we are back in the cabin, and we're gonna go ahead and make our final connection here to the bulkhead ground. So you wanna reinstall our ground wire back on there first. And it goes on like that. Then you're gonna wanna run the washer over that, and then the nut. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we got our terminal on, we're just gonna hand tighten it first a little bit and follow up with a 10 millimeter socket in order to tighten it up. And that's it. Good to go. So now we're gonna go underneath the car and make the connection to the transmission. And here we are in the underneath the car and we're gonna route the new ground wire. I'm gonna route it over this these hoses right here and I'll route it right next to the 12 volt battery cable that I installed as well. Just wanted to see that video. I'll drop a link as a card and also in the description. That's a video on how to upgrade the positive side of everything from the alternator all the way to the battery with zero gauge wire. We're gonna make the connection right here. And here's your bolt. John Hervey would be proud. Tighten this up a little bit, then we'll factory spec torque it. Okay, well that takes care of the bulkhead ground fortification, or as I like to call it, the John Hervey style grounding. Again, I left the original ground in place. That's something I firmly believe in doing, and I've been doing that whenever I reground something I'll still keep the old ground in place just to be on the safe side. I know that this ground leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, it's probably about as long, maybe a little shorter than this ground here, but this ground is zero gauge welding cable. So uh, it's gonna be a lot better overall. I think it's gonna make a big improvement. So anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching.